All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump right into respiration. We're going to talk about the first major process um, in the breakdown of glucose and the production of ATP, and it's glycolysis. You can see it here um, occurring outside of the mitochondria and out here in the cytoplasm. I mentioned in the overview screencast that glycolysis occurs in every single living cell. Okay, if the cell has cytoplasm, um, it's going to have the enzymes that allow it to carry out glycolysis. And it's the initial breakdown of glucose. Glucose stores a lot of energy in its bonds, in its carbon, in its carbon to hydrogen bonds. And glycolysis is going to start ripping those bonds apart because that's where that energy comes from. So we have to we have this glucose molecule which is fairly stable that isn't going to break down on its own. We have to kind of destabilize it. We have to pull hydrogens off of it. We have to move bonds around um, and create different isomers and, and make it unstable in order for it, in order to get that energy, in order to rob that energy from it. So our overall goal in glycolysis is to take this glucose, to take this energy, rob energy from it, which ultimately comes in the form of 2 ATP. We're also going to reduce some coenzyme NAD to make NADH so it can travel down and, and help to um, run the electron transport chain. So that's, and, and obviously we're going to make this pyruvic acid or pyruvate, same thing, um, in order that we can proceed to the next step if there's oxygen present. If there isn't, we go to fermentation. So um, glu glucose, once again, is our starting material. Glycolysis is a series of enzyme-catalyzed reactions, and it's 10 steps overall, and it literally means sugar splitting. That's going to make, hopefully, some sense to you once we get through the overall process of why it literally means sugar splitting. Glyco referring to the sugar, lysis meaning splitting. And as I said, it takes place in a cytoplasm of all cells, and it's an anaerobic process. It doesn't require oxygen. It can, it can occur whether oxygen is present or not. So that's why it's important um, for fermentation. How are we going to create ATP? Well, up to now in our studies, we've only talked about um, ATP in terms of it being produced oxidatively or through chemiosmosis. We're going to talk about ATP being produced via substrate level phosphorylation. And that means that phosphates are actually going to be ripped off of a substrate by an enzyme put onto ADP to make ATP. So that's sub, it's happening at the level of the substrate. That's why it's called substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, so that's an, kind of an overview for you. Let's look at the inputs and outputs. Let's try to balance these. Obviously we start with glucose. There's an initial input of a couple ATP. All right. Um, you need to get it running. You need to invest some energy. Invest. You got to spend money to make money. In other words, okay, we're gonna um, kind of you have to light the match to start the reaction happening. It requires two coenzymes: uh, nicotinamide adenine diphosphate, the NAD. Um, it's also going to require some ADP as well. Uh, the outputs: we're going to convert these two this one glucose into two pyruvates. Glucose is a six carbon molecule. Each pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. Two times three is six. So our carbons add up. That's good. We're going to output four ATP. But look, we had to input two. So if we look down here, that uh, equates to a net output of two ATP. We're going to make two NADH to help power the electron transport chain. We're going to make two a ADP because we require two ATP, so that gets converted here, and there's also some water that's output. Two phases of glycolysis. We have the energy investment phase, which I just said. This is where you're, you're investing money, you're investing energy in order to make it on the back end. So initially it takes two ATP, but we said in the energy payoff phase we're making four. So that's an overall payoff of two, an overall net production of two ATP, which in the grand scheme of things when you're talking about uh, a glucose, if you're allowed to move on aerobically into the Krebs cycle and into the electron transport chain, we're going to make way more than two ATP. So this is a small amount, but it's a start. 
and it's all um, <clears throat> uh, obligately anaerobic organisms get because they can't do the Krebs cycle, they can't do the ETC. This is all that fermenting organisms get. Okay, they don't get any more because there isn't any oxygen to proceed. We also get two NADHs. All right, these are this is NADR, our coenzyme which carries energy to the electron transport chain. Let's look at NADH a little bit further. Specifically, let's look at NAD. This is NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Okay, this might look familiar to you. We have a five carbon sugar here. This is a ribose sugar. We have a phosphate group, and we have a nitrogenous base. Okay, this this NAD is a derivative of B vitamins. Okay, so it's important that you're getting your B vitamins. You're getting these coenzymes um, because you need this for these metabolic reactions to occur. This should look um, similar to the nucleotides we've been studying before, just kind of rearranged differently. And it is a it's a an excellent example of the unification of life and how so many things in our metabolism, not only ours but in plants um, and all living things that have nucleic acid, which they all do, it's kind of redundant, they're all operating with these type of systems. Okay, this is NAD as a whole. The business end, the, what, what we're really interested in is up here. Okay, and so we've kind of zoomed in to the nicotinamide um, portion of this molecule. This is the oxidized version. Okay, so this is when it's NAD plus. So this is kind of the if we view it as a battery, this is going to be uncharged. When we charge it, when we um, add hydrogen to it or electrons, which is the same thing, we're adding hydrogens. It's utilizing the electrons of the hydrogens. Here's where we put that hydrogen. Okay, we put it right there. We convert it to NADH. There's also going to be an extra proton. You're going to see it written as NADH plus H because the first hydrogen neutralizes this, the second one makes it NADH, and then there's an extra uh, proton, NADH plus H. So this is huge. This is going to be our energy carrier for the redox reactions and the electron transport chain. Keep this in mind. There's going to be another um, one of these coenzymes, another one of these energy carriers that emerges in the Krebs cycle that behave is, behaves very similarly to this one. Um, but we have to make this. Here's how we do it. Okay, This is glycolysis. I, I, I found two good diagrams and I couldn't really decide which one so I put them both on here. Um, I'm going to go through them slowly. Um, don't freak out. Just stick with me here. And what I really want you to do is, is keep in mind the enzymes. Okay, know what the enzymes do. If you know what the enzymes do, we're, we're going to understand this process. We're going to understand how we start with this glucose, which is stable, and we go through this series of steps to destabilize it. We're going to rip hydrogens off. We're going to move phosphates around. And like I said, we have to destabilize it in order to pull energy from it. So initially, you're going to see from here until we have this big split, this is our energy investment phase. You can see we start with glucose and we change it to glucose 6 phosphate. We add a phosphate to it. How does that happen? Well, this is the enzyme, hexokinase. Hexokinase, anything that ends in kinase, um, if you think about that word, kinase uh, has to do with kinetics. Kinetics are involved with energy. And phosphates are a great source of energy. So this ATP is going to drop off a phosphate. It's going to become ADP, adenosine triphosphate becomes adenosine diphosphate. And you add this phosphate to this hexose sugar. So it's a hexokinase. Remember, whenever there's a kinase, ATP is going to be adding um, or removing a phosphate. Okay? Well, if it's removing, it's going to be ADP removing. But phosphates are going to be moving around if you have a hexokinase. So now we've moved from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. This destabilizes its molecule. Okay, So we're moving in the right direction. Next step, we have to go from glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. Recall, when we were talking about organic molecules, 
Glucose and fructose are isomers. They're both C6H12O6, but they have a different um, atomic arrangement. So we rearrange. We have an isomer when we go from glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. That's why we need an isomerase, specifically phosphoglucose isomerase. But I'm more concerned that you remember that it's an isomerase. Okay? So, further destabilization. Fructose 6-phosphate, we're going to go to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Sometimes you're going to see it called 1,6-biphosphate. Same thing. You're smart enough to know that the difference between this name and this name is the addition of a 1,5-phosphate. So we're going from 6-phosphate to 1,6-biphosphate. We have two phosphates, so that means we're moving a phosphate. That must mean we have a kinase, and we do. And we're inputting another ATP. So here comes a, some more investment of energy. More investment of energy. So far, it's cost us two ATP to get to this stage. But the addition of this second phosphate makes this molecule extremely unstable. Okay, So unstable that it's going to split. And it's going to split into these two molecules. And I wrote them in previously because I didn't want to mess with the pen, but I wrote them in because I want you to understand more of the process than worry about the name. I want you to know the name, but the shortened version should be easier. And this should look familiar. Okay, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate splits into G3P, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. This is um, kind of an intermediate which an isomerase is going to quickly um, convert or rearrange into a second G3P. So, for our purposes, this fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is going to split into two G3P because this DAP is going to become a G3P. Okay, so now we have two G3P, and the rest of this happens times two. Okay, this is what this is signifying. That means we're going to have two of this guy, and two of this guy, and two of this guy, and ultimately two pyruvates. Okay? So now we're at two G3Ps. Where have you seen G3P? Hopefully you're, you're hearkening back to the Calvin cycle, right? G3P was a, was a main product at the bottom of the Calvin cycle. We wanted to reduce carbon dioxide down into G3P. G3P was a precursor for um, glucose, and we kept moving on. Now, think more into the Calvin cycle. We had G3P, okay? We also had BPG. We also had 3PG, but it was in the other order. Recall that? Um, we, in the Calvin cycle, we went from 3PG to BPG to G3P during that reduction of carbon dioxide. Well, this is reversed. Just another example of how all life is connected chemically, okay? We're all using the same chemicals, the same processes in our metabolism. But look what happens. We have G3P. We're going to convert it to BPG. How are we doing that? Well, we have um, NADH production now. All of a sudden, this is the, the first time we are reducing this coenzyme, NAD, and we're ripping a hydrogen off of here ripping a hydrogen off and adding it to NAD to make NADH. We are dehydrogening this. I know that's an awkward word, but look, the enzyme is dehydrogenase. We're ripping a hydrogen off, two hydrogens actually, adding them to the NAD to make NADH plus H. This is going to go to the electron transport chain. And now we have BPG. What's next? Well, here comes our payoff. Here comes our the first release of, of ATP. Okay, and remember, this is all times two because we have two G3Ps. So we have a phosphate being ripped off of this molecule of BPG. And what moves phosphates for energy? Kinase. Okay, phosphoglycerate kinase makes ATP. And we move on to 3PG. All right? So we have two phosphates produced here. Now we're even. 
It cost us one, two. We have two of these guys both um, at this stage making ATP. So now we're even. We're at even money. We're at 3PG. 3PG is going to get changed. It's going to get mutated to 2PG, 2-phosphoglycerate. Moving this phosphate from the third carbon to the second carbon. So it goes from 3-phosphoglycerate to 2-phosphoglycerate, 2PG, with the help of an enzyme called a mutase. We have a mutase. So now we're at 2PG. What's next? We have to get from 2PG to PEP phosphoenolpyruvate. Where did we see PEP? We saw PEP. We saw PEP in the C4 reaction, right? We saw PEP in C4. Um, and we've seen pyruvate as well. This is with the help of an enolase. What enolases do is they create double bonds between carbons and they create rings as well. So you see here, there wasn't a double bond. This enolase creates the double bond. Now we have PEP. And finally, we have one more kinase that's going to rip this phosphate off, add it to ADP. Here's our, our net gain of 2 ATP to make pyruvate. All right? And remember, the point of this whole thing is to destabilize, 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 destabilize through every single step until we make pyruvate. And then we're going to further destabilize that if we're able. If you're, which you're a eukaryotic organism, so you're able to further destabilize this in the presence of oxygen, turn it into acetyl-CoA, and move to the next step of, of respiration. So th this is it. I mean, it seems like a lot, but if you can remember what these different enzymes do, what kinases do, what isomerases do, what dehydrogenases do, then you're going to be in good shape. Okay? And remember that all this down here is times 2, okay, because we have two G3Bs. Um, this was the other picture. Now, whichever one seems clearer to you, feel free, um, but we have our glucose moving to glucose 6-phosphate, same thing, um, and, but I just wanted to make them both available to you. Here we have the energy and in investment phase. And this here is where it splits. Here's a G3P or a dehydroxyacetone phosphate, which becomes G3P. And here, finishing the energy um, output phase. Okay? And um, that's glycolysis. So we're going to move on from glycolysis uh, to where the real um, ATP production happens. We're going to head into the mitochondria. Um, via acetyl-CoA, do the Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, and continue to destabilize, continue to break down our initial glucose, continue to rip off hydrogens, make coenzymes, and make ATP.